Recently, whilst on stream, I discovered a new open source package. One that has quickly become one of my favourite customizations of all time. This package allows you to modify the basic mouse cursor on Linux to something a little more appealing. A banana. Not just any old ripe banana, however. Instead, one that comes with a bunch of features. These include peeling back whenever you hover over a clickable link, or spinning around while something is loading. Not only this, but like all good open source packages, it also allows for a high level of customization, allowing you to configure your own banana that matches your favourite colour scheme, such as Capuchin, Dracula, and my personal favourite, Tokyo Night. This package is the fantastic banana cursor, and it's brought some real riz to my Linux customization, making it the envy of my co-workers, my friends, and even my family. Because I love to share my configurations, I decided to peel back the package and do an entire video on it, looking at how you can install it onto your system as well as customise it to your own preferences, enabling you to have a system that looks as fresh as mine. First things first, let's take a look at how to get Banana Cursor installed on our system. If you're using Arch, or an Arch-based distro, by the way, you can easily install it via the Arch user repository, using a package manager such as Yay. Unfortunately, however, installing it this way means you only get a few customizations. For most people, this is probably fine. For me, however, I want to have my own custom-themed banana so I'm going to need to install it from source. To do so, let's first clone down the repo onto our system using git. Then, in order to install it, we need to first install some dependencies. The first of these is yarn, which should be available on your operating system's package manager. Next, we need to install the Python package of ClickGen, which is a cross-platform Python library for building both cursors for X11 and Windows. This can be installed either through using pip, or it's available on the Arch user repository. The last dependency to add is zip, which is used to zip up the cursor in the yarn generate command. With our dependencies installed, the next thing to do is to install the node packages using yarn. This is achieved by using the yarn install command inside of the banana cursor directory. If you're unlucky like I was, then you may have an issue trying to install the Puppeteer package, where it just hangs indefinitely. In order to solve this, you can use the yarn add puppeteer command with the ignore scripts flag, followed by changing into the node module slash puppeteer directory, and then running the install script manually using the following command. Once this command completes, you can then return to the banana cursor directory and run the yarn install command again, which should now complete successfully. Once it's complete, you can then use the yarn generate command in order to build the banana cursor, which takes a bit of time. Once it's finished, however, you should see a number of archives inside of the bin directory, one for each of the banana themes. With the banana cursor now built, we can install it by extracting the theme, or in banana terms, peeling it into the relevant directory. For a single user installation, this is the .local slash share slash icons directory inside of the user's home folder. With our cursor themes installed, the next thing to do is to configure our desktop to use them. This step will differ depending on which desktop environment or window manager that you're using. The Arch Linux Wiki, which is arguably one of the best pieces of documentation on the internet, has some guides on how to install it for whichever environment that you're using. In my case, I'm using Hyperland as my window manager and GTK is typically the most common UI framework I have on my system. So to set it up, I needed to add the following lines into my Hyperland config. The first of these lines sets up Hyperland to call the set cursor command of the hypercontrol CLI, passing in the value of banana and setting the size to 48. The next two lines set up the banana cursor for use with GTK by using the G setting CLI. First, setting the cursor theme to banana, followed by setting the size again to 48. Now when I log out and log back in again, my mouse cursor should be replaced with a kind of small banana, at least in my opinion. Personally, I'd much prefer to have one that's a little larger. Fortunately for me, obtaining a larger banana isn't too difficult. To do so, I first need to delete the existing generated themes using the following rm command. Then, in order to generate a new version, I can pull out the ctgen command from the build script and paste it into the terminal. In order to generate new sizes with this command, I can use the dash s flag, specifying the sizes I want to be built. In my case, I want to generate a cursor that can be scaled up to 128 pixels, 
However, because I use two times scaling on my system, then I need to make sure that there's a version that is two times bigger than this. So I need to add in the following two sizes of 192, which is two times 96, and 256, which is two times 128. With my sizes defined, I can execute this command to build a new theme, followed by copying it into my dot local slash share slash icons directory. Now, when I run the hypercontrol command again, setting my cursor size to 128, I now have a decent sized banana as my cursor. With that, I can make the following changes to my hyperland configuration so that my cursor settings will be applied whenever I log in. With that, I'm now satisfied with my banana's size. The next thing I want to do is customize the color theme. By default, banana cursor comes with four different options, yellow, red, green, and blue. Whilst these all look pretty great, as a Linux user who loves to procrastinate, I'm going to want to set up my own custom theme. Let's take a look at how to do this by generating a cappuccine themed banana. The banana cursors documentation gives the following examples on how you can achieve this using the mpx cbmp command. This command should modify the colors of the underlying SVG. However, when I tried this, I found that it didn't actually work, with the generated bananas still having the same color. So instead, I ended up taking another approach. This approach was to define the themes inside of the render.json, which is actually where the standard banana cursor themes are also defined. This file allows you to override any of the colors inside of the base SVG, which allows for a high level of customization. Therefore, in order to create my new theme, I added in a new entry to the render.json named banana-cappuccine-mocha. Then I went about replacing the two main colors found in the SVG. First, replacing the yellow of the banana with the yellow found in the cappuccine mocha palette, followed by then replacing the color found in the banana's stem with the surface one color of the cappuccine palette. With my new theme defined, the next thing to do was to make a couple of changes to the build script. Opening this up in NeoVim, I navigated down to where the various names of the themes were defined, and added in my new theme of banana-cappuccine-mocha. Then underneath this, I navigated down to the ctgen command and added in the same sizes that I had defined before. This meant that the banana for my cappuccine mocha theme would also be well sized. With my changes made, I then went ahead and ran the yarn generate command again, which then built and archived my themes inside of the bin directory. Now all that remained was to install it as I did before, using the same peel command I had defined earlier. With my theme installed, I was then able to test it by running the following hypercontrol set cursors command, which showed me that my cappuccine mocha theme was working as expected. Now all that remained was to make the following changes into my hyperland configuration in order for my cursor to remain fresh. In addition to cappuccine mocha, I've also created some other custom themes, such as the banana hacker theme, Banana Dracula, and my personal favorite, Banana Tokyo Night. You can find each of these on my own fork of the Banana Cursor repo. There's a link to this in the description down below. Additionally, if you happen to use NixOS, I've also created a guide and a custom derivation so that you're able to use this fork in your own configuration. A big shout out to Vim Joya who helped me set this up. Ultimately, this level of customization is what makes the banana cursor so enjoyable in my opinion. And given that bananas are one of my favorite fruits, having one as my Linux cursor makes my customization feel rather appealing.